this is a wug. Isn't he a cute wug? You just wanna kinda... Ooh. Careful. Careful with a wug. This is a good wug. You don't wanna meet the bad ones, trust me. But this is a good wug. A very pleasant wug. What a cute little wug. But wait, there's more! Wow! Now I have two! Hey, if I have a little wug over here and another little wug over here, then what do I have? I guess I have two... Wugs! I have two wugs! Maybe they can keep each other company. The WUG test was a linguistic experiment created by Jean Berko Gleason in 1958. It was designed to test uh, the acquisition of the plural formation in English-speaking children. With the English plural, you have what's called an uh, you have what's called a, a, an allomorphic rule or a rule of allomorphs, which mean uh, different alternative forms to express the same meaning. For example, the English plural is can be expressed by the voiceless consonant s, which by the way is the sound that a snake makes, or by the voiced consonant z, which is the sound that a mosquito makes, like anyone can tell. And there's also the variant form is. I can give you some examples, like you can have a cat but two cats, you can have a dog but two dogs, or two wugs, and you can have a rose for your sweetheart, or two roses. It's also worth noting that the rule doesn't just apply to formation of plurals of English nouns, but also to the pronunciation of the possessive suffix spelled apostrophe s and of the and of uh, third person singular forms of verbs in the present like creates gives and changes so how does this rule work if you have three forms namely s, z, and z how do you know which one to apply of course native speakers acquire this rule naturally as any person who learns their own language, but uh, we are able, as as uh, as uh, curious students of language, to take a look at how this rule operates. Now, this rule is a phonological rule. Now, in non-technical terms, that means that it is a rule triggered by pronunciation. So, how does it work? Well, the first. Uh, the first thing we need to know is we need to we need to learn about something called voicing. Now you can have voiced and voiceless consonants. When you say a voiceless consonant, like for example, if you make the sound that a snake makes or the sound that an S makes, s, and you put your hand here, s, you'll notice that there's no vibration here when you say s. 
Now on the other hand, if you make the sound that a mosquito makes, you're going to have some vibration and you can try it if you pronounce zzzz, you're going to feel vibration emanating from the throat. Uh, you can even put your hand somewhere else on your head and feel the vibration. You can say zzzz or zzzz. This vibration is emanating from your vocal cords. When a consonant is when the pronunciation of a consonant in the mouth is accompanied by vibration from the vocal cords this is called voicing and those consonants are called voiced now now that we know this we can have a look at how it works the word for example cat it, the consonant at the end is voiceless t -t -t -t. no voicing so the so it's going to be cats so whenever the word ends in a voiceless consonant then the plural morpheme at the end the plural the sound that makes the plural at the end is gonna be s, which is also voiceless cat cats now if the sound if the word ends with a voiced consonant or with a vowel you're going to get you're going to get the pronunciation z, like for example, wug, wugs. G is pronounced, and so is g is pronounced uh, uh, voiced, and so is z, wugs. But what about, what about for example, uh, what about loss and losses, rose and roses? There you get the is one. Now this is also triggered by pronunciation. And this happens when you have words that end in so-called sibilant consonants. These consonants are s, z, sh, z, ch, and j. Now try, if you can, to pronounce, for example, loss or roses or churches or bridges. Now this is a very hard thing to do. And so the language provides for that by inserting a vowel right in the middle between the sibilant consonant and the other sibilant consonant z, which marks the plural. So that you say losses, roses, rouges, flashes, churches, and bridges. So now to further illustrate the point, we will end this video on a few examples. Remember, this is a rule triggered by pronunciation. So, mind the spelling, but pay special attention to the sounds at the end of these words. First, words ending in voiceless consonants. Cat, cats, duck, ducks. Then, words ending in vowels or voiced consonants. Law, laws, pub, pubs. Then words ending in sibilants. We'll start with words ending in s, bus, buses, loss, losses, laps, lapses. Words ending in z, rose, roses. Words ending in sh, flash, flashes, cash, caches. Words ending in zh, rouge, rouges. Words ending in ch, church, churches, clutch, clutches. And finally, words ending in j, cage, cages bridge bridges so that's all for now